Lesson 10.3, Task 3, Solve Logarithmic Equations. All right, so we've looked at solving logarithmic equations graphically, and now we're going to look at solving them algebraically. In addition to solving logarithmic equations graphically, you can also solve them algebraically. Some logarithmic equations can be solved directly if they can be rewritten so that both sides of the equation are logarithmic expressions with the same base. Now that's important, it has to have the same base. In this class, most of the time they're gonna have the same base. But remember, just like with exponential equations, we could solve those if they had the same base by dropping the base. All right, so property of equality for logarithmic equations. All right, for all real numbers, b, where b is not equal to one, x and y log base b of x equals log base b of y. So if b is the same thing, then you can set x and y equal. Okay, and again, that's an if and only statement. That means it has to work both ways. All right, so let's look at an equation and see if we can solve this algebraically. All right, so it says solve log base 6 of 3x plus 7. So log base 6 of 3x plus 7, and that equals log base 6 of 5x minus 1. All right, so when they have the same base, it says you can set x and y equal. So this is my x, this is my y. So I can say they have the same base, so 3x plus 7 equals 5x minus 1. So very quickly, that went from looking difficult because it had the logarithms to looking like a simple two or three step algebraic equation. So subtract 3x, we're solving for x. So you wanna get x on one side, so I've got seven equals, five minus three is two x, bring down my negative one, add one to both sides. That's the inverse of negative one. So I'm gonna have two x equals seven plus one is eight, divide by two, x is four. All right, so it says solve, and they did the same thing here. So they have dropped the log base six from both sides and set the other two parts equal. So three x plus seven equals five x minus one. And then they solved the same way we did and got x equals four. All right, what property justifies the first step? All right, the first step is justified by the property of equality for logarithmic equations. All right, we had the other property for exponents in the last section. All right, what property justifies the second step? Okay, so the second step, we subtracted 3x from both sides. So that's gonna be your subtraction property of equality. And then it says, what is the result when you check the solution in the original equation? How can you find the actual numerical value? All right, so we go back up here and we found x is four. So what we're gonna do is say log base six of three and in place of x, we're gonna substitute four. and then plus seven. All right, so we're gonna have log base six, three times four is 12, and then 12 plus seven is 19. All right, so how would we evaluate log base six of 19 to find the actual value of the logarithm? Okay, so you just have to use your calculator and you can say log Find your log base button and put in log base six of 19. I didn't need that extra parentheses here, let's see. Mm. All right, and then I'm gonna hit enter. All right, so we solved for x. We found that x is four. But then when you plug x back in, if you want to know what the logarithm actually equals, log base 6 of 19 is 1.6433 approximately. All 
All right, let's see. What is the result when you calculate the solution? Let's see, when we calculate the solution, we got 1.64. Let's see what they have. All right, they just says to, um, you could also use the change of base if you wanted to, log 19 over log 6, and it would evaluate the expression for you. So they didn't evaluate it, but if you plug this in your calculator, that logarithm will be about 1.64. All right, that's all for task 3. If you have any questions, let me know. Lesson 10.3, task 4. The logarithmic equation in the next task also involves two logarithmic expressions with the same base. However, this equation contains a constant term. The property of equality for logarithmic equations cannot be applied. All right, so that means we're going to have to solve it a little bit different. Okay? All right, so you can see it says, we'll move this up a little bit. It says solve log 8x plus log of 20 plus x equals 3. All right, so if you remember, we looked at properties of logarithms. Remember, if they have the same base, there's no base, so this is assumed to be base 10. If they have the same base, when you add, you can condense that, change it to one logarithm with the same base, but addition goes to multiplication. Okay, so we're going to say log 8x. Instead of addition, we're going to have multiplication. And that's a plus instead of a x. All right, and then equals 3. So I didn't change anything. I just rewrote it using my properties of logarithms to condense this into a single logarithm. Okay, so now I can multiply these. So I'm going to have log. 8 times 20, so I got 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 20, 40, 60, so that's 160x, and then 8x times x, remember, add exponents, so that would be 8x squared, and this equals 3. All right, now we have a base of 10, so we can do 10 to the third power equals this. Now, why can we do that? We can do that because of definition of logarithm. Remember, if we have log base b of x equals y, we can go from base raised to this power and back to that. We did this before, and that equals base to the y power equals x. So now we're just using this definition of logarithms, which we practiced already, to rewrite this equation so that we can solve. So no base means it's assumed to be base 10 to the third power equals this expression here. And I'm going to just put this in descending order for exponents. So I'm going to write my 8x squared plus 160x. All right, so 10 to the third is 1,000 equals 8x squared plus 160x. I'm going to subtract 1,000 from both sides, which means 0 over here. And then that's going to be minus 1,000. All right, now you can factor this. Look for a greatest common factor first. So we can pull out an 8. And if we pull out an 8, we're left with x squared. 8 goes into 160 um, 20 times. And 8 goes into 1,125 times. All right, now we have a quadratic, so we got to factor this quadratic. And so we can rewrite this as, now the 8's going to drop off because the 8 can't equal 0, but I'm going to leave it there for a moment. So we're going to factor this, what multiplies to give me negative 125, and what adds to give me 20 in the middle, okay? So back to factoring, so we're going to do x times x is x squared. 
Well, it multiplies to give me 125. Well, 25 and 5. 25 and 5 are a difference of 20. So I'm going to say 25 and 5. I need a positive 20, so the bigger number is positive. And that means this is negative. And then I set each factor equal to 0. So x equals negative 25 and x equals 5. All right, now, properties of logarithms and exponents, you can't have a negative answer. So that means this answer here is not going to be a true answer. It's going to be an extraneous solution. So the only actual answer is x equals 5. Now, if we go back up here and look, they did the same thing. They used the properties of exponents first to change this to multiplication. They multiplied these together, and then they rewrote this using definition of logarithm. And then they did the same thing, moved the 1,000 over, so I set it equal to 0. Anytime you have a quadratic equation, you can set it equal to 0 so you can factor. And then they factored and got their two solutions. Now, they did write... This should be x minus 5 equals 0, x equals negative 5, not minus 5 again. So that should be an equal sign there. All right, let's see what kind of questions they have for us. All right, what property justifies the first step? All right, the first step was the product property of logarithms because we went from addition to multiplication. How does the second step follow the line above it? All right, so the second step, what did they do? The second step was the same as us. So the steps follow the definition of logarithm. Okay, and that's where they, we just rewrote it as base to this power equals this, and that got rid of the logarithm part. What happens when you check the solution? X equals negative 25. Again, you can't have a negative logarithm, so that's going to be an extraneous solution. So that means the only true solution is 5. Let's see, X equals negative 25. Let's see what it says. When x equals negative 25, the left side of the equation becomes log of negative 200 plus log of negative 5. However, the logarithm of a negative number does not exist. Okay, so they said it just more detailed than I did. All right, and that is all for task four. If you have any questions, please let me know.